What up, Brandon Rockers? <sighs> See the man here, and um, when I hold this up, I'm supposed to say, if you see, it says spoilers here. If I'm going to at least hold this paper up, you'll know I'll be talking spoilers about this movie. Especially the ending, because it frustrated me a little bit. Just a little bit. But I guess overall looking at it just from Wikipedia, it's just saying all of it, it works, I guess, just looking at it that way. But the way the movie handles itself, I don't know. But Hardcore Henry, it's a, the, one of the first person perspective action-based films, like a first person shooter style, and we the audience are technically Henry. We're looking through the eyes of Henry, and that's how we're supposed to you know, emulate with our protagonists, because that's who we are. And then we meet up with our other protagonist and antagonists, and one supposed protagonist that, well, spoiler, turns out to be an antagonist. You'll find that out later. And that's uh, one thing. Charto Copley is like one of the biggest highlights of this thing. The villain, he's kind of a villain, but he's very Bond villain, like cheesed Bond villain kind of thing, kind of thing going on with him. And the film's mostly winds up being a revenge tale about him going after Akon in revenge, as revenge for his for his wife Estelle. For his so wife Estelle, which he somehow was a, a normal person who had gotten of some sort, winds up somehow a cyborg or having cybernetic implants for the most part in his body. And we find out through this whole adventure, he's trying to do whatever he can to save her, with the means, with whatever means he has to an end, to do so, to stop this Akon guy, and he gets help from this Jimmy character played by Charlton Copley all along the way. This is an all right film. I'm probably going to talk spoilers after I tell you this. This movie is just middle of the road for me. It's it's okay. It's not great because it's, it's fine with the action scenes, except there are moments where it does get shaky. And it would help even more if they had better screenplay. They had better... It's a story or a plot. It's not the best. But there is some form of progression. Some of it feels regressive a little bit. And it tries too hard to cater to that, to our the Call of Duty and all that stuff, uh, stuff generation. And, it's some, and to a degree it works, and some of it's like so damn shaky to where I'm glad they didn't do it in 3D, because it would have just been, because it would have been too much, and if you're, hell, if, even if you're at this point, if you're drunk, watch you and watch this, you better have a barf bag with you, because you probably, you might feel some level of motion sickness from the way this cam gets shaky from the everything, and it's just, and some of the glitchy things that happen since he's like partially a cyborg, so, to make some sense of it, it just, eh, it's, I've, uh, I hope if they continue to do this, they do a better job of how to handle their camera work, and uh, all that stuff, because that's just too much, but other than that, it's decent, it's enjoyable, and, um, Though there is some things that are kind of problematic, and now that means spoilers, guys. I'll just put it on here. It's free. Damn it. Never mind. But yeah, spoilers. So. <sighs> Jimmy is the, scient the scientist guy. He is actually responsible for helping create these, this army for Akon that were all prototypes. And they just didn't work out. And he knew there was some bugs with them. Akon didn't listen to him. Put him in some chamber. It turns out that he... Turns out the guy, the real guy, is curled from the waist down. It makes... It's weird how each time he shows up, he's supposedly different outfit and different person. And he shows up within the same time frame. It's like, wait. Why are you still here? Why is, what's going on? Turns out he made a bunch of, like, his own cybernetic sort of avatar tars for himself. Because... 
during that incident, he was crippled from the waist down, and he created a machine that allowed him to form, like, robotic avatars of some sort of himself in different forms. And, of course, he probably went mentally crazy to, to some degree as well. And he's our protagonist that's helping us completely along the way all around. And aside from the little musical number issue they decided to do in the middle of that revel one revelation, just uh, how much did they pay you, Charlotte Copley? How much did they fucking pay you? Just how much did they fucking pay you, dude? Oh, jeez. That was just, no. Other than that, everything else, he is the one that brings a sense of humor. And any form of plot progression this movie honestly kind of has, for the most part. And the villain himself, Akon, is just... Where the fuck does his telekinesis come from, dude? Where the fuck? I mean, they never even bother to explain it. That's, like, another big issue I get with, this, with the way this movie is done. That it's clear that you got to completely suspend disbelief, but there's a point where it's just, like, some small explanation would be nice for some of it. At least with our main protagonist, we're getting something... For the most part. Uh, and uh, the thing that bothers me the most is by the end of this. It sets the point where they make him such like an OP type of boss. To where by the time you get to the ending it's like, why didn't you do this before? But the way they handle it, it's just... Now you are just as, almost about as mad as him by the end of this. This sense of betrayal. And the whole portal cake is a lie thing. Except it's the love is a lie. Estelle, the wife, is not his actual wife. It's not Henry's. It is Akon's. The villain. It was all a setup to help use that, using her as, an, as a catalyst, a mot motivative catalyst to help him build up his army of cybernetic, of his own cyborg army of super soldiers. As, which you, which you, before I'll add information, you've beaten and wiped the fucking floor with in such fucking action-packed fucking glory. And then you finally try to fight Sam, and every time, just fucking complete pwnage. But from Akon, every fucking time. And, and this, and now you finally have the balls to finally just say, and it takes, and Tim Roth's role in this is only minor, but it winds up becoming meaningful for the Henry character. Like, get the fuck up. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, get the fuck up. And just kick this dude's ass, and I felt the chick did not get enough of the justice that was deserved for such a, for such bullshit. You know, putting him through all, having become a cybernetic robot, just pretending to have been being lied to about something like that. I mean, is that what I want in a fucking woman, damn it? I mean, aside from looks, everything else, and certain brains, except when they, in the case of this ending, ah, fucking no, dude. This is bullshit. Bullshit and you know, bitches at you, and it's like, what happens is you basically finally get the balls to get the fuck back up after revealing that you were just nothing more than some. Something, yeah. And then it's, by that point, Tim Roth's character plays as the father, which is the only memory of this throughout this entire thing that actually turns out to be completely fucking real and actually Henry's and not Akon and not something that Akon used to just fucking fuck with his memories just for his own gain of of corporate evil espionage bullshit or whatever and what happens is that is that he basically raped, jumps onto the helicopter he basically winds up fi finally fighting back against Akon 
to the point where he eventually pretty well de- decaps him, takes his decapped head, like walks, jumps up into the helicopter. Estelle looks at him, looks at her, and is like, "Where is he?" Gives him the head. She gets pissed off. It's like, "Why could you do this to me?" Bullshit. And he's like, "Fuck you, bitch." We're like off, like fuck you about it. Lee responds by writing "easy" in his own blood. Blood. She, Henry, but the bullet ricochets off his hand and wounds her. She stumbles out of the helicopter and is left hanging at her fingertips. It still pleads for her to listen to his heart, but Henry slams the helicopter door on her finger, sending her falling to her death. And then we get straight to the credits. Though it seems I didn't see this part after this, and it was apparently Jimmy had decided to leave a message, asking to do one last thing. However, the lyrics to the song that plays afterwards throughout the credits simply says that he's just done fighting. He has nothing to fight for, nothing to live for anymore. It was kind of, it's a very cynical, dark ending. It's different for a movie like Seven, but... For this kind of movie, it's not doesn't necessarily leave the best of taste in your mouth. Especially when you almost wanted him to beat Akon's ass and get the girl. But I will say, I didn't see it coming, but as a single dude who's about to reach 30, it kind of is a depressing fucking thing to see. Especially if the guys, and if it's the guys now and they're all married or some shit, this ain't gonna fucking bother you as much. <laughs> but for me, I just, yeah. That's a no-go, guys. But yeah, that's... Spoilers are done. If you haven't skipped over it now. Overall, guys, I didn't mind this movie. It's alright. It's not It's not the best. It's middle of the road okay. What did you guys think of it? Uh, leave a comment down below in the description box. I'm hoping to see definitely better movie next week. Much better movie. Save your money to go see, like, a Deadpool hell. You better... Hell, you... you Probably be better off watching Batman v Superman instead of this movie, honestly. You could just wait till it's on cable or something and it'd just be like, oh, that's kind of nice. And the, at least you'd be able to go near, closer to a bathroom that way than whatever. Ugh. I mean, I didn't throw up or nothing, but I could see why it would just fucking... Ugh, ugh, fucking make you just a little queasy or just dizzy just fucking trying to watch the damn thing. Again... Thank God they didn't do it in 3D because they probably knew it was going to fucking wreck some people up. Hell, there was an old couple in front of me and my buddy. Just, I'm surprised they were even, I don't know what led them to want to see this movie. That's just, especially with the generational gap there. My goodness. That's what was weird about it. Unless there were people who knew about this movie when they were in Toronto or some shit and they decided, hey, let's go see this again for some reason. Just, uh, just fucking because. I don't fucking know. Well, again, leave a comment down below. Rock that like button if you liked this. If you didn't, that's, I understand. I don't blame you. <laughs> but, but don't. Just, you don't like, of course you don't like it. You love it, no. But yeah, speaking of that reference, yes, Weezer, I'm going to eventually get to that. I'm going to eventually get to Deftones. I have listened to the, I've listened to all those album, both those new albums. They will be a part of the Random Rock Countdowns I will be doing for those. I will also be doing something, I'll still mostly be movie-centric, I think, this month. And then I think I will eventually get to Dust from Tremonti. And that should be what's going on for thus far for this month. And that's it. As always, guys. Well, actually, that's not it. For my random account, I want to do something a little different. I'm going to try to do the guitar thing. I'm still working on that a little bit. It'll probably still suck again, but some of it I think I've I've managed to do well with. On a good note, so. With Weezer, at least. I don't know how I'm going to do Deftones with that. But... I have decided that if you want to check this movie out, uh, that's not what I meant to say, damn it. What I meant to say was, 
if you want, comment below during those videos and tell me which albums from those bands do you want me to review next. That would be awesome. And, uh, yeah, you know, give, give you guys something to do, you know, since you're probably bored just watching me just talk about shit, you know. Figured I'd do that. Give you a helping hand here. Stand me a helping hand here. Ah, no. But anyway, guys, so always keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking, and I'll just see you guys next time. Hey, peace. Uh